Now here in Paris, the Institut du Monde Arabe is showing over 80 artworks from one of the most prominent collections of contemporary art from the Arab world. The works predominantly by Iraqi and Egyptian artists are from the Barjil Art Foundation, an independence art initiative based in the UAE. And we're joined in the studio by the man behind that foundation, Sultan Al Qasami, who is not just an art aficionado, but a commentator on Arab affairs. Sultan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you've had exhibitions at Aga Khan in Toronto, at Whitechapel in London, and now in Paris. Is there an attempt to shift the focus from the regional and make Arab art more international and accessible? Well, I think there's an attempt, on our behalf at least, to try and change the narrative. The, nat the narrative so far has been one of politics and military and, uh, you know, it's all negative sort of. But we try to focus a little bit on what's being created rather than what's being destroyed in the Middle East. Now, Sultan, um, there, this particular collection is a mix of what you like, what you're drawn to, what is potentially politically charged, and also what's of historical importance when it comes to some of the artwork. How do you try and draw a balance? Well, we try to operate as a private foundation for the public good. So I do not necessarily always buy works that appeal to me. I try to buy works that are politically, socially, uh, uh, res uh, you know, responsible or uh, would have uh, an interesting impact on visitors. So uh, some of the works that we buy uh, are, are works that reflected a political event that took place uh, 50 years ago or so. And some of them are contemporary artworks by artists who live and work today. Give me an example of one of those. Well, one of them that you just had on the screen was of Barack Obama, for instance, by a Syrian artist called Abdullah Al-Umari, who attempted to uh, uh, depict uh, the strong world leaders, including Angela Merkel of Germany, uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia, uh, Barack Obama, and other world leaders, but in a... Uh, in, a, in, a, in a state that you don't usually associate with them. They're just regular people. They, they, they're people that you could encounter on the street. And so he's trying to humanize them in a sense. Now, Sultan, what's interesting about this exhibition is that none of the artwork is for sale. Yes. Well, this is a non-profit foundation, so the works here are not for sale. In fact, Sanam, when we showcase in international museums, oftentimes these museums ask us to sign some kind of, um, uh, you know, agreement that we do not sell these works, that these works uh, will stay within the private foundation for a number of years. That is because they do not want to appear to be commercial establishments. Now, artists from the Arab world, we could say, were previously neglected in comparison to other artists in the international market. Why do you think that was the case? Well, I think it's not just the Arab world. It's artists from Iran, artists from Pakistan, artists from India. Really, from, from, from our part of the world, there isn't enough of an emphasis. And we cannot continue to rely on you know, Westerners or foreigners to try and shed light on our art. We need to step up. We need to say, this is who we are. We are not all about you know, uh, uh, you know, this negative news that you sometimes come across. But we are also about creativity. We're also not just about the past. We're also about the present and the future. Now, Sultan, you were known for your commentating during the Arab Springs. How did you fall in love with the world of art? In fact, Sanam, I started the foundation in 2010, which is a whole year before the, uh, the Arab Spring, but I've been collecting art since 2002, so that's 15 years ago. And uh, I've always been interested in art, especially art that has a political dimension to it. But I feel that as you know, the Arab Spring has faltered, I feel like there's, the emphasis has only increased uh, and the responsibility has only increased on people like me to showcase the beauty of the Middle East. Now, lastly, this is about Arab world, Arab art. You have gone for a Belgian curator. What was the decision behind that? Well, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not just the Arab world through Arab eyes. I, I also like to invite uh, non-Arabs, non-Middle Easterners to, to come and interpret the, uh, the Arab world through their eyes as well. So sometimes we invite outside curators to come and showcase the, and choose works and curate the, from the collection. But sometimes we do it in-house. So we're, we're very much all about, not just the Arab world, but the entire region, I think, uh, needs, deserve to be uh, looked at uh, with a, a fresh new eyes. Any teasers of future projects? Well, we're working on something in Latin America, but I can't go into details. OK, well, thank you very much for speaking to our Sultan. Now, if ha you happen to be in Paris, this very colourful exhibition is on until July the 2nd. We'll now leave you with some images of the artworks. Thank you very much for watching Middle East Matters.